in all of these, what all of these have in common is that they will manifest with class all the signs of insulin resistance. And remember, there are two real aspects. It's the coin analogy where you will have cells that aren't responding well to insulin. And in the whole body, insulin levels will be elevated, which makes the elevated insulin cause of insulin resistance particularly vicious because if elevated insulin is a cause of insulin resistance, which is then causing more elevated insulin, which then contributes to further insulin resistance, you can see how this becomes a positive feedback and a vicious cycle. So the last one that is totally unique is starvation. Now, I need to define that term because too often people will think of starvation as just fasting. No, there's a big divide between fasting and starvation. In fact, that divide is something we can pinch and jiggle, namely our body fat. That if you have body fat to burn, this is a topic for another time, so I'll be a little sparse on it, then you're fasting. The moment you are restricting calories and you've run out of fat, now you're burning your lean mass. You're burning muscle for energy in particular and even bone and everything else. You'll start eating away at your body to just continue to make enough energy for the brain to survive. And in that state, the body becomes very insulin resistant, which is primarily, interestingly, a stress response. But it's unlike the earlier stress response that I spoke about, because in this instance where the body is wasting away, you are insulin resistant, but insulin levels are low. The body can't afford to keep insulin high because if insulin's high, then the body is attempting to store energy, which would deprive the brain because the brain can't handle a state if energy is just being stored, stored, stored because it doesn't store energy. It needs to be pulling it from the blood. Any other instance of insulin resistance that I'm aware of, and I think I'm aware of all of them, insulin will be elevated if the body has insulin resistance including physiological insulin resistance. And we'll, we can talk about, we'll talk about that at a future time. All of these stimuli that I've talked about are direct effects. If you directly increase inflammation due to illness, for example, or a food sensitivity, the body becomes insulin resistant. But if you remove that stimulus, they're insulin sensitive. Same with stress, same with elevated insulin. So these are direct effects, direct noxious stimuli causing insulin resistance. But there's a more creeping version of insulin resistance, which now brings us back to the fat cell. There are multiple theories of which tissue of the body becomes insulin resistant first. Some will say that it is the muscle that becomes insulin resistant first. Some will say that it's the liver. Others will say that it's the fat cells. Um, anyone who says it's other than the fat cells is totally wrong. Now, I expect they'd say the same thing about me, but I'm right. Fat cells are the beginning. That is the first domino to fall. You know probably by now of my affection for alliteration. Fat falls first when it comes to insulin resistance. And the, now, so what makes the fat cell get big? So when a fat cell is, uh, when a fat cell starts to grow, that's a, that's a process called hypertrophy. And as the fat cell continues to grow, it, it starts to experience two problems. First, it can't grow anymore. It's actually reaching the limit that the cell membrane can hold together. It's like a water balloon that's getting so full that it's about to burst. It's going to pop, and then everyone gets messy, and we get water all over the house. Now, one solution, let's just stick with the, the analogy comparing the fat cell to, the, to a water balloon. If we can't disconnect the balloon to the tap that is filling the balloon – what if we could just poke a small little hole in the balloon without popping the whole balloon? Now it's starting to leak out some of the water to match the fat that's coming in. That's really analogous to what's happening with the fat cell as it gets too big. Insulin is continually telling it to grow, mostly by inhibiting its ability to release the fat, but also by force feeding it. And so the fat cell basically says, insulin, you're not letting me break down this fat. I'm not listening to you anymore. And so I'm going to become insulin resistant. And so it becomes insulin resistant to stop growing. This, this is why people on average can't limitlessly get fat. There is this point beyond which they can't get any fatter. Now, there are some exceptions where some people genetically have the ability to make new fat cells. They can multiply their fat cells. Those are people who, continue, who can continue to get fat. But that's uncommon. So the big fat fat cell, the hypertrophic fat cell becomes insulin resistant to stop future growth. 
Second, as it gets so big, it starts to get pushed further and further away from capillaries, which is the essential blood vessel where a cell gets all of its oxygen and all of its nutrients and then dumps all of its waste products into the blood to be eliminated from the body through the kidneys or the liver or the breath in some instances like CO2. So it's the capillary. And so the fat cell that's getting so big is getting pushed too far from the capillary. And that becomes what's called hypoxic. In other words, it's running out of oxygen. And one response to that, the fat cell is saying, hey, I'm suffocating here. It will start releasing pro-inflammatory proteins, what are called cytokines. Now through the body, this begins to turn on all of those inflammatory pathways that will then cause insulin resistance. But at the level of the fat cell, one effect of one of these pro-inflammatory proteins will be to tell the capillaries to start making new capillaries. So it will increase the, vascular, the vascularization of the fat cell, helping it start to breathe better. It can get oxygen again. But again, the consequence is that it's spilling the inflammatory proteins throughout the body. Now, what is it that makes the fat cell get big? There are two essential elements to this. You cannot have one without the other in the whole body. It is impossible. You must have an elevated insulin level to signal to the fat cell that it needs to grow. That's the stimulus telling the fat cell grow. And then you must have sufficient energy or enough calories available to fuel that growth. I hope that you can appreciate the difference. A fat cell that is swimming in a sea of calories in the absence of insulin will not store any of those calories. It is totally, completely, physically impossible for a fat cell to not only grow, but even stay big if insulin is low. It cannot hold on to its energy. So you need an insulin stimulus and you need sufficient energy to fuel that stimulus to grow. Now you have a hypertrophic or fat fat cell, and then you have this kind of more in creeping insidious version of insulin resistance that, you know, th that's sort of settling in over time as the person's gaining this weight in a unique way by making the fat cells get big.